Hi, my best friend had cancer. In 2013, Sydney and I were at a friend's house at a party and we began talking about her neck because she was talking about how she was gonna go to the doctor's office soon for it. And I looked at it because she put her, her hair away to the side. And I had never really like seen it full on before. Like I knew it was there, but she always wore her hair down and her hair did a really good job of hiding it. And she was like, yeah, you know, it's probably just like a, an infection or the lymph nodes are not draining properly, whatever. And I just like straight up looked at her and I was like, are you sure it's not lymphoma? It was indeed lymphoma. So glad that I was able to diagnose you one year before the doctors. Once she started going to the doctors, it was just more and more tests and biopsies and scans, trying to figure out what the heck was going on. And everything was pretty much coming up inconclusive. So I, I imagine she was really, really frustrated with it. And of course I was, and her mom was. Um, our other close friends were really confused and frustrated. We didn't know what to think. At that point, you know, we were just really hoping for any sort of answer, just something we can do, something we can hope for, just some sort of end goal. <laughs> It was just a long process. I think it was just important that we were all there for her when she was having all these biopsies done and tests run and still, you know, trying to figure out what's going on. I remember when she got her first biopsy, I thought it was the biggest deal in the world. I was so scared and like I couldn't sleep the night before. I was just like so worried and I brought her flowers and bean dip the next day because when we were little girls, we had this tradition to buy each other bean dip on our birthdays because she was teasing me about what she was getting me for my birthday once and I thought she said bean dip and then she actually bought me bean dip <laughs> as a joke. So I decided to return the favor and I brought her bean dip and flowers after her first incisionary biopsy. I later found out after another biopsy that I couldn't bring her flowers because of the pollen in the flowers. They could actually make her sick. But when it became really real for me, we were sitting in my kitchen and we were cooking ramen and she got the results back from the PET scan that there was hypermetabolic activity in her neck and I had no f idea what that meant. I was like, oh good, there's activity going on. Great. That's a good thing, right? And she just looked like the world had been dropped on her shoulders because it had been. And she was staring at her phone and I think she was shaking a little bit and she was just like, oh my god. She explained to me what it meant and I wasn't crying. I was in I I don't rarely cry when things happen. I'm in shock and I'm processing. But our other friend Danielle just started to sob and then I realized, oh this is real and I realized what it meant and that it would probably be diagnosed as cancer. Danielle was just crying and Sydney was trying to comfort her and it was kind of a weird reversal where Sydney was comforting and we were both in shock and it should have been the other way around. Um, but it was a good thing that she can handle those types of things very well. So that's really the turning point when it became really real for me was that night when we were cooking ramen. Finally, we got the diagnosis that she had lymphoma. It was almost a relief to know, okay, finally we have an answer. And after that, she started treatment. Yeah. She did a lot of sleeping, a lot of watching Netflix. I still saw her like every day, pretty much, which was really good. She was always happy and well, you know, as happy as you can be at that point. She always had such a positive attitude. It was, it was harder to get out because germs can't really have any infections going on. She had a nasty pick line. It got infected and that was pretty scary. It looked like a nebula, which was really cool. Like she showed me pictures and of course I got to see it in person. And I was like, wow, that's actually really pretty, but that looks so painful. Wow. And she said it was really, really itchy, which is never fun, but the pick line was good to have it helped the drugs go into her system better. A lot of times when I couldn't be there, I felt like I really was missing out. She would go to the doctor with her mom. Like I never went to the doctor with her or anything, of course. I didn't get any of the information like firsthand from the doctors. Her mom and Sydney always told me what's going on, but you know, it's like, oh, I want to be there. I want to know what's going on. Overall, I was just really impressed and astonished and proud at the way that she handled the situation. It just kind of makes you realize, yeah, you are mortal. It can happen to anybody. You know, you never grow up thinking like, oh yeah, my best friend's gonna have cancer one day. No, you don't think that. Just the fact that she was able to take such a terrible situation and make the best out of it. And I feel like she's really grown as a person and watching her grow has helped me grow. I'm privileged to say that I've been able to watch her go through this and it's taught me a lot. Don't! <laughs> Look at this 
I was thinking about this video last night and I was crying in my bed and I was like, I can't, I can't, I can't cry, I'm gonna be fine. You know, watching this evolution of my best friend has just been crazy but amazing and we just know a lot more about ourselves that now um, after all this. Watching her go through this has just made me so grateful. It sounds awful that 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 I can be grateful for my best friend having cancer, but it's just really, it's really changed us for the better, I think. And it's made me a better person watching and learning with her. I know she said this in her video, which is linked down below if you care to watch that. But this whole experience has just made her really grateful for being healthy and being able to overcome this. And any difficult obstacle you have to overcome, no matter who you are, it's gonna change you and it's gonna make you better if you go about it the right way. You can go about things one of two ways. Either it can destroy you, and it can make you depressed and it can change you for the worse or you can learn from it and get stronger and grow and be better and you can choose to be happy and you can you can choose to make the most out of terrible situations and I feel like it's just so empowering when you do. Sydney officially went into remission on May 12th, 2015 and to commemorate this I decided to get her favorite flower which is a sunflower tattooed on my hip. It just basically helps me remember to Choose happiness no matter what obstacles you might encounter in your life. There's a lot of negative space in the tattoo itself which represents that without uh, the dark you can't see the light and without contrast there is no happiness. Like if you're just at one level of happiness your whole life you're never going to have those ups and downs and you're never going to know what true happiness is. I'm just, oh god that was going to be, <laughs> I don't want to say that. What were you doing? I don't know. Okay, fine I'll I say it but know. you're probably going to cry. <laughs> Um, I'm just really glad that I didn't lose her. <laughs> I told you. I can't even imagine. So. I think that pretty much encompasses it. Thanks for watching and I hope this is helpful at all or maybe helps shed light on what it was like to really be going through this with your best friend and um, if you guys are going through the situation or a friend or a loved one is going through any sort of health problems, all I can say is just really be there for them and be as supportive as possible. Just show your love and show your happiness and remember to always look on the bright side of life. I know the cure to cancer. Hi, my name is Brooke and laughter is the best medicine. I see fun. You know, not the majority. Ah, yeah, no, You're a snitch. What's this? Yeah, you have like. <laughs> yeah. Calm down. <laughs> Activating my parasympathetic nerve system. See, she knows about the science stuff, so you should watch her video. Science rules. Bill, 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 Bill,